Hi, and welcome to Discounting Cash Flows. Our website is built for fundamental stock analysis and valuation, specifically for people that seek the intrinsic value of a business, also known as value investors. I'd like to show you how to value a company really quick and easy using our interactive valuation models. We'll be using Apple as an example. Here we want to click on the valuation tab. We'll select the discounted free cash flow model. You can see that the website comes up with an estimated value of $120.52, while one share of Apple is traded at $162.51, which implies that the stock is overvalued by 34.84%. This value is calculated using the two-stage discounted free cash flow model with auto-generated assumptions, which might require some adjustments. The first stage of the model estimates the future free cash flow, discounts it into the present using a discount rate, and sums it up. If I scroll down to the table section, under estimated future data, we'll be able to see the free cash flow as well as the discounted free cash flow. The sum of the discounted free cash flow is right here under the values of interest. Second stage estimates a terminal value by assuming that the company will grow its free cash flow in perpetuity at the growth in perpetuity rate set in the assumptions. This value is set by default to the yield of the 10-year treasury bond and it's updated daily. Here is the US Department of the Treasury, containing the daily treasury par yield curve rate. If we scroll down, we can see the 10-year treasury bond last yield was 2.67%. Then scrolling back to the values of interest, you would add the discounted terminal value to the sum of estimated discounted free cash flows, add cash and equivalents, subtract the total debt, and end up with the total equity value, which can be divided by the diluted shares outstanding to get to the estimated value per share. So the models are interactive, meaning that if I change a value in the assumptions, it would recalculate the model. If I change the discount rate to 6%, the estimated value increases. I also want to explain the rest of the assumptions for the model. So we already know what the discount rate and growth in perpetuity do. For the projection years, you can have longer or shorter forecast years by changing the amount. If I change it to 10 years, we can see that the chart automatically updates and forecasts 10 years now. The historic years are used to calculate the average historic rates. So setting the value to 15 years, we readjust the projected revenues because they're forecasted using a linear regression. The projected revenue slope is the level of inclination of the projected revenues. If I increase it to two, becomes steeper. While if I set it to zero, the revenues will become flat. And of course you can set it to a negative value to invert it. To get back to the default value, I'll just read the current value and tab out. The operating cash flow margin is used to estimate the operating cash flows as a percentage of revenues. If you subtract the capital expenditure from the operating cash flows, you end up with a free cash flow. Notice that the projected points on the chart can be adjusted by dragging them as you wish. Also, the associated spreadsheet automatically adjusts and you can edit each value in the spreadsheet individually.
Another feature is that you can change the currency used by the model. If I scroll up and click on the bill that says original, I can use dollars, euro, British pounds, or Canadian dollars. If I choose euro, all values will be converted into euro, including the estimated value. It's important to know that for now, the data that has been adjusted is not automatically converted. I'm going to switch to the original currency now. The valuations are shareable, meaning that you can share them with anyone by giving them the URL link. Just hit copy URL and load it in another window. You can see that the model loads with the assumptions set. You can also set a watch for this model, so you can keep track of your companies. Click Add Watch, and you'll see here the custom assumptions set on the model. Let's name it Apple DFCF. And click Add Watch. Your watch will be listed in the watch list and notification page. You can also set a price alert if you want to be notified by email if the model's intrinsic value reaches a certain threshold. Click the bell and set your notification condition here. Then click on add notification. Notice that each model will be evaluated once every 20 minutes. So our notification is set. We'll go back to the model now. We scroll down, notice that the model uses the diluted shares outstanding to calculate the value per share. I'll show you how to edit the model's source code if you want to use the undiluted shares outstanding, and you'll need to do a little bit of coding yourself. Scroll up and click Show Code. Then go to the code editor. Scroll down to the value per share calculation. Here you can see that the value per share is equal to the equity value divided by the weighted average shares outstanding diluted. And we need to change this. Go to the income statement of Apple. Turn on developer mode and scroll down. Here are the weighted average shares outstanding. We need to copy this key, go back to the editor, paste this key in, and also we need to edit the print value. Paste the key in print value and remove the word diluted. Give the model a new name, like custom DFCF, save it. Now we should be able to find the model in custom models and apply it to our company. Select the model, your custom models, and it's listed right here. scroll down and see the shares outstanding are now updated. We have a documentation file on GitHub called Valuation Functions, which contains functions used in the model. I'll leave the link to it in the description for anyone interested in editing the models. I hope you'll find the website helpful. If you do, please leave us a like, subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions. Also, any feedback would be much appreciated. Thank you for watching and happy discounting.